We are just 30 days away from September 19th and the drop of FIFA 20 Early Access on both consoles this year, by the way, which is absolutely phenomenal. I'm so excited. I just wanted to be here already, right? I'm getting bored waiting for FIFA 20, but I thought whilst we wait, we might as well sort of talk about some things that are coming in FIFA 20. Now, before we get into this video, if you guys do go on to enjoy this video, leave a like down below and please, please, please subscribe to the channel if you guys aren't subbed already. We are so close to 100,000 subs. We are on the borderline of 95,000, which is mental and it's crazy to think about that we've gained like 6,000 subs this month but it's absolutely incredible i'm so grateful 100k has always been my dream so if you guys could subscribe and help me out to get to 100k it'd mean the absolute world to me it really would so without further ado let's jump straight into the video now this year there has been an absolute avalanche of of transfers there's been so many good transfers that could be in fever for the ones to watch and if you guys don't know what the ones to watch is maybe you've been living under a rock maybe this is your first fifa i don't know the ones to watch happens twice a year in uh october slash september time and in january slash february time and it is basically where ea compile the best transfers or their favorite transfers or essentially players to watch the ones to watch from transfer windows uh of players that's that signed to different clubs they give them a special card in fifa and that card is dynamic so for example um a card gets uh, a special card for its base rating if that player gets an inform the wants to watch item then turns into the rating of its inform if that card gets a man of the match the wants to watch item turns into the rating of its man of the match and so on and so forth uh and the card just keeps on climbing if the player performs well so it's almost like an investment if you buy one because you know the next week they could play really well and get an inform or they could not and their price could drop so it's pretty cool what they do with the wants to watches now there's been so many transfers as someone that could potentially get awards to watch. I have compiled a list of 23, and what I'll do is I'll go through this list of 23, because obviously it'll be a 23-man squad, and then, if you guys want another one, we can do a part two in like a few weeks' time, where I talk about a potential another list of loads more players, because there's a lot of big names, and there's a lot of small names that I missed out from this list, so... You may, may or may not be a little bit angry at me if I've missed out a play from your favorite club. I do apologize if I have done. Like I said, there's just so many transfers to get through. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go through and uh, and talk about what I think could be the potential ones to watch. Um, this is not a ratings prediction video. The ratings in this video aren't predictions. They're not. I'm not anticipating people getting this rating. I just thought we'd give them cool little ratings just to make the card look a bit more interesting, really. Now, the first player in my FIFA 20 ones to watch is Wissam Ben Yedder. Now, Ben Yedder it just moved to monaco on a five-year deal for about 40 million euros or 37 million pounds um and he's actually a pretty solid player both in game in fifa and outside i do remember him playing against my united and in, in, in scoring kind of annoying not 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 approval for no i don't approve of that ben Yedo. i don't approve of it but he's gone from the la liga to the french league uh which will be interesting i know the french league as you guys know is a little bit slower i don't know how slower it is compared to la liga but it'll be interesting to see if this will mean he'll get a lot more special cards playing against worse teams for example um or if he'll get less special cards because he's playing against better teams we'll have to see um but it's an interesting move being french obviously he's moving back home uh which is pretty cool so uh i mean good for him and hopefully he does really well because i love getting special cards of Ben Yedda. his team of the season card this year was unreal he's had so many incredible special cards this year uh, and I hope that next year it can continue and it'll be dope to just get a once to watch item from him that just keeps rising and rising and rising in rating uh, it would be a dope one to get you know at the start of the game and just hold all year next up I've gone with Bruma now there's a couple plays in here that are less rating or lower rating should I say uh, plays that aren't quite noteworthy like for example Bruma who is a good transfer for PSG PSG PSV um, however he's not like a huge name signing and the reason that is because EA like to throw in a few lower rated players uh both just to fill packs and to you know make everything diverse if they just had a 23 man squad of like 90 rated players I don't think it'd be that great um or EA don't think it'd be that great I think it'd be pretty cool but EA don't think it'd be that great so uh, I've thrown in a few lower rated players just sort of balance the mix out here and uh and Bruma is one of those players now he's just transferred from the Bundesliga to PSV for 17 million dollars uh now I'll leave in the description uh the source that I got for all these transfers so if any of the uh any of the the fees or anything like that are wrong it's the source's fault 
not mine. Okay, do apologize if any of these fees are wrong. However, uh, Bruma had a cam card last year with incredible pace, uh, decent dribbling, decent shooting. And I think he'll be one of those really good starter, starter team players this year as well. Uh, obviously, he'll help with uh, with decent hybrids and stuff like that, which will be pretty cool. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Now, this man you may be familiar with it is Jao Cancelo moving from Piemonte Calcio, aka Juventus, to Manchester City for $73 million. I believe there was also a swap deal in there with Danilo. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if Danilo, Danilo and Cancelo swapped or if Danilo and Cancelo literally just went to the other club for a fee. I've no idea how that actually worked. The logistics of that deal might have been a little bit mad. I have no idea. However, you guys are probably very, uh, very up to grips with Jao Cancelo. You probably know a lot about him as he had the perfect link to Ronaldo last year. So a lot of people last year used Cancelo and Ronaldo's perfect link. Ronaldo just sent to mid, Cancelo as a right back and it worked really well. Now we have Cancelo, uh, Bernardo Silva perfect link, which is interesting. Um, and we also have the uh, the ability to use Ronaldo still and get the link off to the Premier League as a decent hybrid link. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what kind of teams we get in FIFA 20, but it's a good signing for Man City. Uh, they have got an unreal team and so much depth on the bench. The fact that they can have on the bench at any one time, Riyad Mahrez, David Silva, Jao Cancelo, just to name three players. Uh, Gabi Jesus as well, who's a decent player. You know, he came on and scored against Spurs. There's so many plays on the bench for Man City. It's it's almost painful as a Man United fan. It really is. Like, they're just such an unreal team. Um, but yeah, so Jao Cancelo there to get ones to watch, in my opinion. I think he definitely will. Next up, we have our first loan of the video. It is actually Coutinho, who's loaned from uh, Barcelona to Bayern Munich. Uh, pretty interesting loan, if you ask me. I don't know what's going on with Barcelona right now. Uh, a lot of people are saying they want Valverde out and stuff like that. I'm not entirely sure. Um, you know, I don't watch Barcelona very often and I don't really keep up to, up to date with their like fans or anything like that. But it's pretty interesting. Um, from what I see, I think Coutinho is a fantastic player. I always have thought he was a really good player. Since watching him at Liverpool, I thought he's a fantastic player. Uh, and I know he hasn't really done a whole lot in the La Liga last year. But I don't think that's entirely his fault. Like a lot of people are also saying the same thing for like... Uh, Usmane Dembele. A lot of people are saying it's Valverde's fault as opposed to Coutinho and Dembele's fault for uh, for their poor performances last year. Pretty interesting if you ask me. Uh, I Like I said, I rate Coutinho and I think he'll do really well at Bayern. They're also building a lot of depth in their team. Uh, you know, they've got uh, James Rodriguez now. I believe they just loaned Perisic as well, so that's pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, it's pretty it's pretty cool that they're getting some uh, some good plays, and it's going to be great for uh, for teams on FIFA as well. Another player involved with Barcelona now. It's actually Frankie De Jong. He's just moved from Ajax to Barcelona for eighty three million dollars. Uh, again. If, if the transfer fees are wrong, and they might not even be wrong. I don't, I don't know. Like, what I did was I fact-checked a couple of these, and they were right. So, what I did was I, I assumed that the entire source was right. Uh, if it's wrong, I do apologize. However, um, Frankie de Jong to Barcelona for $83 million. Uh, good signing for Barcelona. I think that he's going to be a very good player as he grows and becomes, uh, a, 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 you know, he grows as a player, I guess, becomes a good player. Obviously, they have, uh, they've built up this incredible team, Ajax, and then they've sold off, like, the Lick. They've sold off Frankie de Jong. Um, so, it's going to be pretty interesting. I know they have brought in a player or two as well which is going to be uh, we're going to talk about that in the video i think as well um so yeah i mean good luck to frankie de Jong. i hope he does well over at barcelona uh, i know that he's a decent player watching him in the champions league was a treat as well as you know delict and, and ziech as well ziech was fantastic in the champions league tadic played really well in the champions league so yeah let's see uh, i want to see how ix do next year as well or this year technically next up is one of real madrid signings in their monster transfer window it is adair militao going to real madrid for 56 million dollars plus add-ons i don't know what the add-ons are um but he's just gone from fc porto now obviously he's had a decent season at fc porto and real madrid have made him one of their huge pool of players that they've signed this year given that you know they haven't signed players uh for a little while they've sold some players on etc they had a lot of money in the bank this year so they've started spending they've bought like four or five different players i think most of them are going to be in this video as well um and i'm not only excited to see him play for real madrid i am more excited for you know FIFA 20 squads opportunities. So we've already got Ramos and, and Varane, who are two unreal centre-backs in FIFA. Now we've got Adair Militao, who will have over 80 paces as a centre-back and probably have really, really good stats. I am so excited to have the, the maybe a back three or a back five with the Real Madrid back three defence or having like Varane and Adair Militao or Ramos and Adair Militao. It's going to be so exciting. Given they've got Courtois and goal is always pretty decent on FIFA, 
I am just really excited to use teams in FIFA. Like, it's going to be absolutely incredible, and I'm super stoked. Next up, we have Nabil Fakir, who went from Olympic Lyon to Real Batiste. Now, an interesting one about this, he signed for $22 million. Now, that might seem like a really, really low fee, but from what I hear, apparently, uh, the only reason why he signed for Batiste is because Batiste were the only club that were willing to take on his brother as well. Uh, apparently, Nabil Fakir has got a younger brother who's not as good as football than him, um, and L Olympic Lyon wanted to get rid of him, uh, like his younger brother as well as, um, you know, Nabil Fakir. And apparently, Real Batiste were the only club that were willing to take on his brother and pay him a salary, as well as Nabil Fakir at the same time. That's why he signed for Batiste. And it was for such a short, uh, or such a small transfer fee. Don't know if that's 100% true. That's what I've heard through the grapevine. There's rumors and stuff like that. If that's true, it's pretty interesting. I mean, I've always thought Nabil Fakir was a decent player. And I feel like a lot of teams would have probably just taken on like his brother's wages just to sign this guy, you know, for $22 million. It's not a lot in, in the grand scheme of things and what modern football, you know, uh, is like today. So I would have thought that people would have just taken on his brother for him. But then again, I am not a professional footballer. I am not a professional football analyst or anything like that. So I don't 100% know all these things. Um, but pretty interesting signing. We'll be interested to see how he does in La Liga. Obviously, him and Ben Yedder have pretty much just gone opposite ways here. So it'll be interesting to see who shines and if someone doesn't, who that person is. Next up, we have one of the biggest transfers of this video. It is actually Antoine Griezmann going from Atletico Madrid to Barcelona for $135 million. Huge, huge signing for Barcelona. Barcelona. Let me just quickly mute my phone. I do apologize. Absolutely massive, massive uh, signing for Barcelona. Uh, 135 mil is huge. Uh, I, obviously, you know, he's a great player. He's proven in the La Liga and it'll be interesting to see how he plays for Barcelona. Um, I think Griezmann's a decent player. I think that uh, one thing I find interesting is I, I don't know really what his preferred position is because I see him on the wing a lot. I see him at center forward a lot. I see him as like a cam a lot. Don't often see him that much as a striker when I've, whenever I've watched him, but that's just my personal opinion. I'd love to hear down below if any of you guys are, you know, Atletico Madrid fans or Barcelona fans where his sort of preferred position is. Uh, I'd love to hear that from you guys because that's pretty interesting, but huge sign for Barcelona and it'll be interesting to see how he does next year. Next up is Adrissa uh, going to PSG for a whopping $35 million. I think this is a good sign for PSG, to be honest. Um, obviously, he's just come from Everton. Uh, I think he played pretty decent in the Premier League and I think he was a pretty decent player for Everton as well um he just looked like a, a pretty decent holding midfielder someone that had run around the pitch a lot uh make himself involved a lot i know he scored a couple of goals for everton uh so it'll be interesting to see how he plays for psg uh hopefully he has you know a good season i'd like to see some nice special cards this just allows for a lot more uh diversity in, in psg's midfield in terms of uh hybrid and stuff like that so you know we can have like the senegalese link here and there uh we can sort of branch out into different players so i'm pretty excited for this and i think it's like the first midfielder in a while PSG have had in my opinion that's really usable as a cdm uh, i feel like Verratti isn't that usable as a cdm but now psg and french squads have a decent cdm in adrissa uh, i just think that he's going to be a good player uh, and i'm looking forward to seeing him in the in the league un i guess i almost said the league but i meant to say league un time for another big boy yet another one of real madrid's huge signing uh this season it is uh, hazard to real madrid for 112 million dollars plus add-ons from chelsea um of course chelsea have the transfer ban they cannot buy anyone but they could sell players and they just sold hazard i think I think next year, Chelsea are going to buy so many players. They're going to have the 100 plus million for Hazard. They're going to have a whole year of earning without spending a penny on transfers. They're going to have a lot of money to spend next year. So it's going to be interesting to see what they bring in. But for now, they've got rid of their best player and arguably one of the best players to ever play in the Premier League. Uh, at, at least during his time, in my opinion, the best player in the Premier League during his time there when he wanted to be um, Hazard. And I think he'll flourish at Real Madrid. It'd be interesting to see how he plays. He'll have obviously uh, high level Champions League football. <laughs> Let's not talk about what happened to Real Madrid last year. Okay, he will have decent level Champions League football. Um, but no, I think he'll just do really well. Now, I know that I'm pretty sure Real Madrid's first game with all their new signings, they played Atletico Madrid and lost like 7-2 or something. Pretty interesting. Hopefully, he does really well at Real Madrid. Let me know down below if you're a Real Madrid fan and if you're looking forward to having Hazard at your club. Next up is Heaton to Aston Villa for, I think it was like $9.7 million. Really not a lot of money at all. This guy is actually phenomenal on his day from Burnley. Uh, fantastic goalkeeper, in your, if you ask me. I know on his like debut for Aston Villa, he gave away a penalty in like 30 seconds. Terrible, terrible debut but let me tell you from a t like from a, a fan's perspective of a main United fan whenever we play Burnley we seem to draw a lot and it's because Heaton just kept 
everything out of the goal at all times. He's a fantastic goalkeeper. In my opinion, does not get the rating he deserves. He's a, he's a very, very good goalkeeper. And I think a very good signing for Aston Villa as well. For such a cheap price, I think they've done really, really well there. And it'd be interesting to see how he does in the Premier League this year. Next up, I think the biggest transfer of this video so far, if not the biggest transfer, yeah, it's the biggest transfer of the entire video, I think, is Jao Felix to Atletico Madrid for $142 million. Mental. Absolutely crazy. Like... What a signing. Benfica have done absolute bits there as well. Um, and he've actually, he's looked incredible to start with Atletico Madrid as well. Uh, I know I saw a clip of him going on an incredible Maisie run and getting a penalty for it after meg megzing someone. I've seen other clips of him like rainbow flicking people in training. He looks like a really, really good young prospect. Um, and it'd be interesting to see how he plays for Real Madrid, sorry, Atletico Madrid going forward. Um, a huge, huge transfer fee. He's got to be a great player if he warrants such a huge transfer fee. I just, I can't see him not being incredible for Atletico Madrid so it'll be very interesting to see how he plays and if he's not if he doesn't live up to the transfer fee someone's definitely getting sacked next up it's Jovic from I think it was Frankfurt I'm not 100% sure but to Real Madrid for 67 million dollars another one of Real Madrid's huge signings this summer um looked pretty decent in the Bundesliga this year obviously he's had a team of the season card uh, I know he's had a future stars card as well although that doesn't actually directly correlate to performance um but from what I've seen he's, he's been playing pretty well in the Bundesliga scoring goals here and there uh doing well as a striker and it'd be interesting to see uh, what he's like at Real Madrid. It also opens the door for a lot of different hybrids and stuff like that in FIFA 20. I think he'll be a decent player to pick up first day of FIFA 20 as a decent striker for your team. If you're going with like a La Liga team, I think he'll be pretty decent. And I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of card he gets. Um, and hopefully he does really, really well at Real Madrid as well. Okie dokie, next one is Romelu Lukaku from Manchester United to Inter Milan. Yes. Um, well, this one was going to come along pretty quickly and I uh, thought we'd, uh, we'd get it over and done with now. I am not happy, even though we got 88 million dollars i'm not the happiest in the world getting rid of him uh i'm happy that we got a large amount of money for him that's obviously going to help maybe making some january transfers and stuff like that um as i think it was like 73 million pounds or 88 million dollars um and i think he'll do actually really well in the uh, in the calcio a or the syria i think that he'll do fantastically there i think that um he will definitely be a brilliant player there however I don't know. I didn't. I, I actually. I actually rate Lukaku. I'm one of like the only Man United fans that actually likes Lukaku. I feel like I, I do like him. I think he's a very, very good player um, when he wants to be. I know his first touch is absolutely awful, but I think he's got that striking prowess that we really need. Uh, luckily, Anthony Martial looks like he's in good form. He's scored a couple goals so far this season. Uh, Rashford's looking decent. We've got a decent front three so far, and I guess he just really wouldn't fit into Oli's playstyle. So maybe it was the right decision to sell him. Um, but I don't know. I actually do like Lukaku and would, I would have preferred if we loaned him out to be honest uh but that's just my opinion uh decent you know, feed to get for him. And I think that he'll do really well for Inter. Next up, we've got myself to my United. Of course, we've got Harry Maguire. The meme is that I look like Harry Maguire. I personally don't see it, but it is what it is. If you think that I look like Harry Maguire, do you think I look like Harry Maguire? Uh, but he's moved from Leicester City to Man United for £80 million. Uh, you know, historically, £5 million more than Van Dijk moved to Liverpool for. I don't really care to compare them. I think that Van Dijk... No, sorry. I think that Maguire has hit the ground running at Man United. He's, he's playing really well in the first couple of games. He seems really solid defensively, and I'm really happy that we fi we've finally signed a decent centre-back, someone that's going to take control of our defence and play really, really well. I think that the two signings we've made in defence this year have been really, really solid signings, and I'm looking forward to seeing him get a ones-to-watch card this year. I will definitely be picking it up. He looks like a really, really solid uh, player this year, and I'm super excited to see how he plays, you know, moving onwards. Next up is St. Maximin, uh, moving from the French League to Newcastle for a whopping $20 million, roughly, somewhere around in that region um it looked decent in the french league uh, obviously doesn't have his gucci headband on in this uh in this picture and i believe doesn't actually wear his gucci headband anymore like he was famous for wearing his gucci headband however i think now he wears a puma headband as puma sponsor newcastle so pretty interesting uh i know that he, he looked all right on his first game for newcastle i did watch the uh, i watched the highlights at least uh, you know i didn't watch the whole game i watched the highlights but uh he looked fast he looked decent on the ball uh, he got one or two shots away uh sadly uh he kind of looked a little bit weak on the ball but that's just my personal opinion. Uh, be interested to see how he plays uh, moving forward and uh, how he performs in the Premier League. But you know, a decent prize for him. If he plays really well, it'd definitely be worth it. And uh, and hopefully he gets a decent skill upgrade for FIFA 20. I'd like to see him have five-star skills. At least we'll have a five-star skiller uh, French player on the right-hand side in, uh, in in FIFA 20. That'd be pretty cool. Next up 
Next up, we have Endon Bele, two spires. Now, apologies if you can't really see the spires badge. The uh, the dark of the card kind of just covers it. I would have used the white spires badge, but they didn't have it on the uh, on the place that I made this card. Uh, now, he's moved two spires from, I believe, Olympic Lyonnais. Eh? Uh, pretty sure it was Leone, but it might, I might have been, I might be wrong there. Um, but he's moved for about 54 million pounds. Now, I actually have down here 70 million dollars. I think that a lot of these uh, prices have been rounded up. So if you're wondering, like, for example, um, if it says Saint Maximin's 20 million dollars, but he actually signed for like 16 million dollars, it's been rounded up. That's probably why. Uh, but he's moved for 54 million pounds. Great signing, if you ask me, for Spurs. Great player. He scored an incredible goal for Spurs already. Um, and he just looks like a really, really solid player. And he's going to be fantastic for. FIFA 20 squad as well. He's going to be incredible in the midfield, and I'm really looking forward to using him in FIFA 20. Uh, great signing both for football and for FIFA, if, if you ask me. Next up is Pepe to Arsenal. Now, obviously, he had a fantastic season in the league and uh, bagged a lot of goals, got a lot of assists, and played really well and signed for Arsenal for about $87 million. Uh, now, on his first game, I didn't really think he did a whole lot. Uh, I know that he makes some fella and he, he played pretty well, but um, I don't know. Like, he didn't do a whole... I don't, Personally, I didn't watch all the game. You know, I watched highlights. I actually watched it on my phone. So, you know, fair enough if, if I'm wrong. Uh, but all I'm saying is he definitely did not mean to megs that fella. I don't care what you say, Arsenal fans. He definitely did not mean to megs that guy, right? Don't even don't even debate it in the comments, right? He definitely didn't mean it. Second loan of the video now is Perisic to Bayern Munich. Obviously, uh, loaned just like Coutinho. Like I said, they've really strengthened their squad. Obviously, they've just lost uh, Robben and uh, Ribéry. Both, I think. I think Ribery's gone to Fiorentina now, and Robin's retired. So uh, they've replaced them with uh, Coutinho and Perisic. Good, good replacements, if you ask me. I know that James Rodriguez likes to play out on the right, so Robin will be replaced there, and then Coutinho play in the middle where James was playing, and then Perisic out on the left. Uh, pretty decent replacements. Again, both loans. I hope that if they play well, buy and buy both of them. I think they'll be good signings to have permanently at the club, but. You know, I'm interested to see how they play, to be honest. Next up, we have Rodri to Man City for $78 million. I think he's the replacement for Fernandinho. Uh, obviously, Fernandinho didn't play for City, uh, I think, against Spurs. Uh, what I find interesting about this is that I personally think that Fernandinho is still a fantastic centre mid and slash CDM. But it looks like as he's getting on a bit, City are just replacing him outright. It's savage. It's so, like, it's just cutthroat, you know? It's like, bam, they've just replaced him. So... I mean, fair enough to City. They just want to keep their machine well-oiled, I guess. Um, and, you know, they, they, they played well against Spurs. They, you know, were unlucky not to score like six, if you ask me. But obviously, they would in the end, thankfully. Well, I say thankfully. Obviously, I, I, I didn't want them to win. But in their case, thankfully to uh, Gabby Jesus for scoring in the end, uh, given the whole VAR drama and stuff like that. I just remember that that goal didn't count, did it? Wow. Why am I saying thankfully? They drew two all, didn't they? Holy moly. Wow. Yeah, that goal didn't count in the end. Wow, okay. Well, Rodri to Man City for $78 million. Okay, moving on. Next up is Pablo Sarabia to PSG for $20 million. Had a really good season in the league last year. And in my, if you ask me, a fantastic sign of a PSG. Would have loved to have him at May night. I think he's a very good player. And $20 million is incredibly cheap. The penultimate player now is Kieran Tierney to Arsenal. A great signing for Arsenal. He looked incredible for Celtic. And he looks like a really, really good player. Um, and I think... He helps our defense massively. So good signing for Arsenal. Looking forward to using him on FIFA 20 as I actually used his uh, his purple blue card, the 84 rated one last year, and it was great at left back. So it would be great to have a card similar to that in FIFA 20. And of course, we had to end it off with Aaron Wambasaka, a fantastic signing for Man United for around $57 million. Great signing. Looks incredible so far this season. And I'm a really big fan of Wambasaka defensively. I think he's fantastic. He needs a bit of work going forward, but I think that can definitely be worked on this season. And it's going to be great. It's going to be great to see him linking up with, the, with Maguire all season and, and Lindelof and, and you know Luke Shaw and stuff like that so I'm looking really I'm really looking forward to it and I'm excited but that marks the end of the video if you guys have enjoyed leave a like down below subscribe to the channel if you guys are new around here thank you all for watching this video and I'll see you later